take another look at spin art. Now I've shown this device before, but it's a really easy build. We get some interesting designs out of it, and I built a smaller version, so I thought we'd take another look at it. The spinning plate is simply an old record. Here, let me pick it up here. And it's mounted to a wooden block, and this block is going to be screwed onto a motor shaft. Now that motor is mounted inside the box, right about here. And here we can see the other side where the shaft's coming up out of the box. Now on the bottom of the box there's four screws, and that's going to hold it in place when I push it down against the carbon. The wires for the motor come through the bottom, through a little hole in the cardboard box to the outside, and I'll hook them up to one of my power sources. This motor is 6 volts, so I can use four D cell batteries. Or if I'm near a power supply, I can hook it up to a battery charger and use the 6 volts that comes out of that. Whoa! Okay. Yes, this is great. Let me do some room. There, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay. There's not that much yellow. Okay, so do it, do yellow. Emma. It doesn't really show up. It's okay. I think it will. You yeah. got, you got yellow in the center. Yeah. All, that's good. all that matters. Yeah, that was me. I did that. I had a yellow Oh, yeah. Why did it get so random? Nice. <laughs> Why I don't like... I want to put dots on That was good, that was good. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good yeah. Cards. I told him to. <laughs> Why is that? That looks like a Okay, thank you. I'll just wash them after. Okay, do it. Eli, that looks cool just how it is, honestly. Look at all of it shooting out onto the side, making all the stuff on the back drip. <laughs> oh, wait. That looks so good. Okay, you said a few will fall. Here you go. Emma's brilliant. Hey, I always see this. Go. That looks so cool. <laughs> the paint is actually rising on the sides. 56. Looks oh like some Mozart's Picasso. Wow. That was cool though. It looks very abstract. And here's a few examples of what we can produce. Now let's take a look at this smaller version. To make one, we need a little toy motor, a battery holder, a CD, and a switch. Now we're going to arrange them inside a box. Let's take a look here. I'll pull the CD off. And here we can see the motor inside. And that motor looks just like this one. And there's a little hub on the CD that the motor fits onto. Just like that. We'll put this back on. Now the wires for the motor come through the bottom, the outside. They go to the switch and the battery. And of course, if I close the switch, it turns the motor on. Now to attach the cardboard, I'll use a few pieces of tape here. I'll double them over, stick them onto the CD, and then just attach the cardboard on top of it. Now it's ready to go. Here's our finished product. Now we'll just pull it off and put it over on the table and let it dry with some other ones. Now instead of using batteries, I have this small generator that uh, is hand cranked and I can hook that up in their place. So we'll simply pull the batteries off here. There we go, put them aside. And I'll hook up the two wires, one to the battery terminal and one to the switch. And if I turn it, well, let's see what happens. Sounds like oh, go at the same time. Go at the same time. Oh, wait, no, you don't want to do it. Kylie, you can be oh. Okay, go ahead. A little too much. Okay. <laughs> I'm tired. Oh, I want it. Four big little wow. with Whoa. Whoa. Okay, it's mine. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's
I want to try some spinning again. No, I want to. Emily, I want to try spinning again. Nimble looks kind of plain. Okay. Okay, that's good. Good job. Really nice. I like it. They're in. Yep. It looks like my Hulk. Really? Yeah. Now as my students were making these, they varied the amount of paint that was added. And as they added more paint, we noticed something else that was interesting. If we added too much paint, it simply splashed over to the walls. As we recorded it and then went back and watched it in slow motion, it was interesting to see the paint splash off and go tangent to the movement of the spinning paper. Without a centripetal force acting on it, it simply moves in a straight line. Now I can see that same type of behavior if I spin this wooden plate and drop this rubber ball on it. As the ball hits the moving wheel, a small amount of momentum transfers to the ball and carries it forward. In slow motion, we can easily see that that paint splatter is moving tangent to the circular position on that wheel. Now, I also think it's interesting to put paint on the paper before we start it and then watch what happens to it as it spins. As we watch in slow motion, we can see the paint slowly work its way directly to the outside of the paper. Now there's quite a bit of adhesion between the paper and the paint itself, but once it breaks free of the paper, we can see a spiral stream of paint going directly out and then hitting the edge of the box. Now as that paint leaves the paper, it seems to curve away and lag behind, but that's really deceptive. The paint particles are really moving away from the paper in a straight line, and we can show that using some marbles. For a short time, the marbles will be forced into a circular path, but when they reach the end of that stick, then they're going to move in a straight line. We're going to give this a clockwise spin, and off they go. Here in slow motion, we can see that same behavior. Once free of the spinner, there's no centripetal force acting on each marble, so they move in a straight line due to inertia. The same would be true for the particles of paint. Now we can form some spirals on the paper by using some larger objects that either roll or slide. I'll try it with these clay balls. They have a lot of inertia and very little rolling resistance. As that plate starts to spin faster, there shouldn't be enough centripetal force to keep them moving in a circular path, so they should roll right off. All right, let's give this a try and see what happens. Well, there's our spiral from the balls. Now let's try it with two metal discs. These are washers that were glued together and a little bit of paint on the bottom. We'll put them on the paper. As the plate starts to accelerate, there's not enough friction to hold these in place, so they slide off the paper. Well, that didn't take too long. Let's see it again in slow motion. While these discs are on the paper, they're still going to have a little bit of friction, and that's going to cause them to have a centripetal force, which is going to cause them to move in a curved path. Once they leave the paper, the friction's reduced, then they travel in a straight path, just like the marbles did. I'll try this once more with paint, and I'll put quite a bit on here in several spots. Turn it on, and it looks like if we put enough paint on, we can get spirals with paint also. Let's see that once more in slow motion.
Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed my spin art projects. Now, I do like this one for my classroom. It's bigger and we get bigger drawings with it. But this one's very convenient and it does require students to work a little bit for it. I can take this one to places where I just may not have room for this one and it still gives us some very nice smaller drawings. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.